I think I'm getting more comfortable in the ring. I've been here for some time now, so I think I'm maturing as I'm growing. I feel as though that great things is ahead of me, you know, as long as I stay focused. What a fight between Barrios and Davis! When Floyd came up to me, he was like, he was down on the official cards. But I'm like, I just dropped him. There's no way I'm down. But, you know, that's coming from Floyd, so. Hey, hey, and then when he said, like, show me you great, that's all he had to say. I don't care about who is in front of me, who is in back of me. As long as I win, that's the whole goal, the win. That's my main goal, the win, and look damn good doing it. Jack, can you believe we're in December already? Man, this basketball season is moving quickly. Oh, yes, and DraftKings is here to keep you covered all season long. DraftKings Sportsbook is at the top of the game, and it's a legitimate sportsbook based right here in the U.S., so you can sleep easy knowing your funds are safe and secure. All new customers can wager $1 on the game of their choosing, and so long as the game doesn't end in a 0-0 tie, they will win $100 in free bets. Make sure you get in the mix. Bet just $1 on any basketball or football game this week, and DraftKings Sportsbook will give all new customers $100 in free bets if either team scores a point. Check it all out through the DraftKings Sportsbook app. There are player props, live betting, future betting, and much more to mess around with. All right, Jack, we got some big games this week. Bulls, Knicks, and Clippers, Lakers. Let's go Bulls, Knicks first. What star play do you think will hit the first shot in that game? I'm going with DeMar DeRozan. He's the guy on that team. I think the first players normally ran for him to get off. And uh, for the Knicks, it might be Julius Randle. He's the all-star. He's the best player. I'm pretty sure they're going to them first. Clippers, Lakers. Who you got with this game? I think first shot, I'm going with AD. Once the Lakers will start playing like AD is the guy on the team and start playing through him, they might start to win. And with the Clippers, with Kawhi out, Paul George is the guy. He's been carrying his, carrying his team and leading them. And uh, I think he'll be the guy to take the first shot. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use the the promo code SMOKE. All customers will get a shot to win extra cash every Friday of the basketball season with their first basket Friday promotion. Pick any player to score the first basket in any pro basketball game Friday and get your winnings boosted up to 50% if the player sinks the first shot of the game. Don't miss out on this week's basketball action and use promo code SMOKE this week at DraftKings Sportsbook. It feels good when you get more. More threes. More wins. More triple doubles. More ways to get back with every swipe with Moneyline. Moneyline is an award-winning, all-in-one financial platform that gives you more. Get up to 5% cash back. Earn up to $500 in cash back rewards on everyday eligible purchases. When you set up a recurring direct deposit, you can get paid up to two days early and access up to $1,000 zero-interest cash advance anytime, anywhere. It's like supersizing your banking. Or getting extra cheese on your finances. Or just winning the game of life. So what do you say? Are you ready for more? Money Lion Bank. Borrow, invest, and grow. All in one app. So, Jack, it's about that time of the season. We're going to have to dig into that bank account. Yeah, man, it's holidays. And I got a birthday, uh, my third oldest daughter's birthday. But I love the holidays. A good, a good time to spend with family. And also a time to see who loves you just as much as you love them. Well, thank God we have Money Lion. <laughs> Welcome back to another edition of All the Smoke. We on this NYC run. Good to east, see you, bro. On the east been side? Yeah, you already know. Dick. We got some representatives yes, over sir. here, man. One of the best podcasts in the game. In the game. Million, million dollars worth of game. Me, 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 me. Appreciate million that. Million dollars worth of game. Our brothers. Our brothers. Just hold up, hold up. Time out. Why did you shake his hand? Y'all didn't see each other all day. I'm not shaking his hand. Oh, yeah. That's a little too much. No, you want a hug. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to have a hug you. Yeah. 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 Let's get a group hug, y'all. Yeah, right. Nah, we're not doing no more. We're going to get a group hug. Man, welcome to the show. <laughs> you already know who they are, but Gilly and Walla, man, we appreciate y'all taking us. My brothers. Time. My brothers. Coming out to Manhattan. Yeah, I, 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 I forgot where you came you know from. He liked to, he liked to, I, hey, I forgot where you came from. He liked to hug it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I, mean, I just like to hug people. That's all. It's a prison hug. I mean. Oh, uh, shit. Uh, man, we both pretty much got started in this game at the same time, and, yeah. it, and it's dope to see 
obviously people you fuck with kind of sell on the same level. You know, we kind of mm-hmm. both respectively in our in, in our yeah. categories have kind of risen to the top. What has 20, uh, 2021 been like for you guys? For me, man, it's just been, you know, chasing it, man. Mm-hmm. You know, trying to get a youth more game, which is guidance, attention, motivation, and education. You know, and just and just really trying to get a, the culture, the interviews that they're looking for, mm-hmm. and the content that they're looking for. That's all we we about. You know, we don't do a lot. We just yes, sir. we older, so we chill. You know, we we you know go. We just basically document our life. Mm-hmm. You know, turn the camera on, document our life, go get the interviews that people want to see and, and give them to the world, that's all. Walla, where you were sitting at a while ago, um, sitting down, got out, did you ever picture it was going to be like this? I'm sure you had an idea of what you could do, knew, but you ever picture it could be like this? The only thing I knew, that I said, I'm going to go out, get with cuz, and I'm just going to live. I ain't had, I wasn't, it wasn't over structure. I ain't no overthinking. Right. I ain't no super plan. I, I'm just a doer. Uh, and uh, I got, came home, was doing my thing on social media. I actually started my my Instagram in jail. I had a wireless hotspot and a and an iPod Touch. <laughs> how, long, how, how long were you locked down for? How long were you down 20 for? Years. Twenty years. Twenty years. I did from uh, thirty. I mean, from uh, seventeen to thirty-seven. Two armed robberies, two firearm violations. Had got sentenced to nineteen and a half to fifty-two year sentence. Did twenty. Came home and uh, you violated twice. Huh? You violated twice. No, you I ain't violated. I said I got I got sentenced two to charges. nineteen and a half. I had two different cases. Okay. I got sentenced to nineteen and a half to fifty-two years. I came home, but I was already doing my thing on Instagram in a cell. They ran in my cell one day, caught me with uh, five cell phones. I started selling phones and shit. <laughs> and it got crazy. I turned into a cell hustle phone. Man. Hustle, man. Joint. You was a drug dealer on jail. You, so, you was the tech communications? Yeah, so so uh, <laughs> I was just, I was, I was like, damn, you know, ain't nobody on social media. Because I used to just talk to dudes in the yard. Trying so to what year is this? This was 2013 to 14. I had the cell phone. Then okay. I got caught 14. Okay. And I came home 2017. Okay. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, really respect your grind, you know, obviously being a fan and getting to know you more, but like you said, you're not an overthinking. You were talking to me and Jack before we got on camera about just how you hit the ground running and your motivational speaking. You out here running in motherfucking monsoons, giving people game on life. Like, where does all that energy and, and, and thoughtfulness come from? One of my homies told me I was the happiest happiest dude in jail. He was like, yo, you the happiest name in jail, man. Well, I mean, we I had said, eight jobs. Listen, I said... Captain <laughs> of the wrestling team. No, no, I didn't. I wasn't captain <laughs> of the wrestling guard team. in the prison showers. <laughs> no, I'm not going to say all that. I will say <laughs> this. You, you, you was occupied. Like, I did. Listen, listen, listen. Listen, <laughs> yeah, I had a lot of jobs. I had a lot of jobs so I could move around the prison. Right. Uh, you know, I worked in the warehouse. I worked in a... Oh, uh, got none of the jobs. No, out. I'm just saying. I was a, I was a chef. In the, in the jail. Bring karaoke was, uh, night. No, I ain't do that one. Yes, you did. I thought about it, but I didn't do that. <laughs> that was a little whatever. But I, I used to just, and so one day my homie said, yo, you always happy. I said, you know why I'm, I know why I'm here. I did my crime. I ain't no innocent man. So I'm doing my time, and I know I'm going to go home. But I'm not going to be in here mad at the world because, like I tell people, I wasn't in jail. I was in Yale. I wasn't in prison. I was in, you know, Princeton. I wasn't in State Penn. I was in Penn State. I was getting my mind together, right. doing reading, watching things on TV. Smut uh, magazines. Smut, definitely. Porn magazines. That was that was a big study of mine. Um, just living life and just... Study of his. You know. <laughs> now you, had to be a, you had to have the gift of gab and be a finesse to have all them jobs and all the connections. Jail. No, I didn't. All I had to do was one thing. I had to uh, move to lock in my next move. When I went and did a job... See, one thing about dudes, especially from our culture, niggas don't like to work. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They lazy, Thanks. bro. I'm going to be straight up. I'm the type of dude, if I come in here and I got to run this joint, I'm going to run this thing. I'll, and if you're in the way, get out the way. Mm-hmm. So my work ethic was so good that supervisor tells supervisor, I'm like, yo, I'm trying to get that other job. I'm going to call over this dude. So, you know, at the end of the day, <laughs> you got to move the lock. Sure. In, you got to move the lock in your next move. I'm, I start off at 19 cent. So I said, damn, mm-hmm. okay. The highest you go is 42 cent. When I get to 42 cent, I'm working for a pay raise that don't exist. I'm just a grinder. Yeah. Because grind, if you grind out anywhere on the earth, you're going to fucking win. Mm-hmm. Now, if you're going bullshit, you want to be lazy, you want to be cool, you want to be uh, lit, you ain't got shit coming. Mm-hmm. So my whole thing is like, I don't care where I'm going to go at. I'm going to just grind and everything going to pay out, you know? For the future of podcasting, what, it, what comes to your mind when we tell you, like, you guys are the future in your genre of podcasting? What does that mean to you? Because I know when me and Jack got in the game, we were at my house smoking in the Bay, and I was like, you want to do a podcast? We didn't really even know what it was. I'm sure probably similar to you guys. Like, mm-hmm. what is it really? But at the end of the day, it's just y'all being y'all. 
So when we say, like, you guys are setting the bar for the future of podcasting in your genre, what does that mean to you? I just think, uh, I think we set it because me and Gil <coughs> came, and from people knowing us, we made it look so easy. To where though you see us, you just like, oh, these dudes just cutting the camera. They don't, you don't see the, the side of us setting the company up, making sure our shit trademarked, paying taxes, going to B&H, buying thousands, thousands and thousands of dollars worth of equipment, you know, uh, me sitting there learning this I've shit. I've seen that myself yeah. when I came over there. Yeah. I, have a, I just bought all that equipment. I seen Listen, that in my own eyes. Listen, we, we saying, you know what? We set in the studio. We're going to get this building. We're going to, down here, we're going to build this room. We're going to get our sound. We're going to do this. We're going to get the sponsor. So it was like, people don't see that part, but we makes it look so easy where it is. You can take a phone and an app and, and start a podcast. And that's our whole thing. Our whole thing to people is, just do that shit. Uh, to me, a podcast is nothing but people there talking about a certain topic, an issue, or whatever. That's all this shit is to me. Mm -hmm. So we're not going to overdo it. Only thing that's different from us, either it's going to be me and him, or we will get the people that you like, and we're going to get them to give you a million dollars worth of game both based off their experience. Right. You was able to get a million dollars worth of game because you done made millions. You done made it happen. Mm -hmm. you, got, you got stuff that you could tell, rather, you know, on life, uh, on sports. So that's all we do, and it's simple. Now you don't have to do that. You could talk about, you could you could have a, a a podcast talking about furniture, and I don't think people understand that. You could have a podcast uh, having fictional stories. You could have a podcast talking about cars. You could have a podcast talking about anything. Anything. People don't people, but people try to. From our culture, we look to the same thing. Oh, let's talk about rap. Oh, let's talk about sports. Oh, let's talk about that. In order to be taken to the next level in this game, you got to bring something new. To where as though you could put ads up against that shit. Mm. To where as though, okay, if I'm talking about furniture, you know how many furniture companies probably want to put ads on that shit? Mm -hmm. Table. And I don't think people understand the business side. They're just looking at it like, oh, they just talk. Nah, this shit is a business side, baby. Mm -hmm. so we believe in what we sell. Right. I so we're it. willing to invest whatever it takes. Yeah, we spend whatever. Into our shit for our shit to go. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? A lot of people be one foot in, one foot out. Even the people that got money, they want right. to go use somebody else's money to. Yeah, yeah. I believe, yeah. We don't, we don't wait on nobody, man. Be like, no, that's what we want to do. Okay, let's find a production company. Okay, what y'all? Okay, look, we want to shoot TV show. Oh, come on, let's go, let's get it. What y'all want? Okay, we don't play no game. Because we mm -hmm. living in the world where, though, uh, technology cut the middleman out. I'm not, I'm not playing no games and waiting for nobody. We gotta sit here because you know you got agencies, you got talent agencies, you got production companies. Everybody want to be sitting here waiting, talking about the formula. My life wasn't no fucking formula or no blueprint that somebody else lived. It ain't my, life, my life was me getting up. I'm successful because I got up and I just done. All that structural shit, I ain't know nothing about that. All that overthinking All shit. All that overthinking shit. We don't, we don't even believe, we don't even subscribe to that shit. You know, know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? You want to oh, do something? we some... should do this because this and because. And y'all think about that shit too much, man. We just go, man. And, all, and, and as simple as, if you want to shoot a movie, you can shoot it on here. Uh -huh. If you got a couple dollars, go get with a production company. If you ain't got no money for no production company, who the dude in your neighborhood that's a good videographer and who know how to edit? Listen, man, I got this couple that's thousand simple. for you. I got, it's simple. Cut, fuck the middleman because you'll sit there and you be waiting all this super deep shit. Oh, I gotta get this. I gotta. Man, that's more motherfuckers in your pocket, man. Bet on yourself, put it out. And if you got an audience, the audience is where the money at. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I don't care if you got this puck or this company. No, no, no. They need your audience. Mm -hmm. And just like him, like I, I know that shit ain't scripted, but that's he did it on his own when you go to the car dealership, when you go to the insurance yeah. place. Right. You know what I'm saying? That's on your own. That on shit ain't own. scripted. Right. You know what I'm saying? So right. that's the that's that's the hustle that that that's probably lost today. You know what I'm Absolutely. saying? People don't understand that type of hustle. But that's but that's the people understanding business. Like, okay, you move the needle. Okay, how can we make this relationship work? Okay, I'm gonna need, I'm gonna need some of this company. Yeah. Yeah, you know what I mean? yeah, yeah. Get some equity out of it. Yeah. Okay, cash and, equity. Right. I need some so, money and I need some equity. So now, when when I'm when I'm representing, I'm not representing for no company. I'm representing for us. Yeah, yeah. I'm speaking for all of us. Yeah. yeah. Cause this my shit too. Mm -hmm. You feel what I'm saying? So, for us, man, we don't we don't really never overthink shit, man. Because a lot of times that be people failure. Yeah. Because you they want to do something, they want to do something, then they. I don't know. Instead of just letting it happen. Yeah. Wait, man, do that shit, and, man. And the way to go is, you'll think about it. Okay, this is what I want to do. I'm going to drink this water. Then I'm sitting back and thinking, I'm thirsty. Why they ain't drink their water? Now I'm going to wait. 
So they drink their water. <laughs> All this dumb shit. No, no. <laughs> drink that shit. We're thirsty. What's going on? Yeah, I was waiting for you to sip yeah. that shit. <laughs> dumb shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You got about Thanks. 20 minutes now. And everybody yeah. is valuing a bunch of people opinion that ain't do nothing. Yeah, right. That don't matter. Ooh. Listen, you're not telling me, you're not telling me how to, how to make this table if you never made no tables. Right. I'm not trying to hear it. Just because your fears and insecurities and your shortcomings on life, that shit ain't got nothing to do yeah. with me. Say that shit. Yeah. I think that's huge because I you think I mean? people, the negativity comes from fear, fear from yeah. that person. They put that shit they on you. They put that fear on you and, and turn into negative conversation because they're scared. they're scared to go out there and get it. And whatever you got to say about me, guess what? Yeah, Wallow's a dickhead. Wallow goofy. Wallow crazy. Oh, hold up. That ain't none of my business. Mm -hmm. If I'm worrying about what you're saying, I'm out of your business now. Right. That shit ain't got nothing to do with me. And I hope that whatever you're saying about me, you putting that shit out there to the universe. Go on social media and talk about me. Because haters is your marketing team. Let them work. Stop, yeah, stop ain't number let them work, please. Please let them work. Stop you know what I mean? No so, you know, I think people, like, we living in a world, it's technology, whereas, though, comments got too much fucking power. Ooh, people yeah. fear comments more than they fear yeah, God in this world. Yeah, yeah. I'm talking about a comment. It's like, you know, they, uh, it'll break my whole life. It'll shatter my whole life. A couple comments. So now we living in a world where everybody fearful. So it's like, all right, y'all fearful. the reality is that the comment could be a 16-year-old boy in Nova Scotia. A, a, a fake page. Totally or fake page. Or a 45-year-old yeah. loser. They've never done a, that in a, their a life. Robot. Right. A robot. But, but they put that negative energy. It's just like, I like to call it a transformation of energy. Because, like, we could all be sitting in here and we all happy, we busting it up, and somebody could walk in with some negative energy, and it's like, what's up, bro? Change the good? whole room. Change the whole room up. Yeah. Fuck the whole room up. Now we sitting here, we ain't even got the same energy because his energy fucked oh, the whole room up. Yeah. Uh -huh. So. Y'all done a lot of interviews, man. Floyd, KD, Shaq, Ice Cube. What's the best interview to y'all y'all done up to date that had y'all in awe? For me, it's got to, you know, I'm a, I'm, my first love before my wife and was basketball. Mm -hmm. So it probably would have to be the KD or, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm, I'm... You're hoping hard. Yeah. Bye, yeah. Bye, 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 uh, he grew up, you know, he, you, he grew I, up like a rap groupie, you know what I mean? How you going to grow up loving something yeah. that never yeah. loved you? You was a bum. You went to D-League college. I got it. You was a bum. I was fucking with Special That was my shit. I got it, You was a bum. Special Ed was jamming. Yeah, he was. I bet I fucked with Special Ed, but he was in love with the man. No, I wasn't in love with him. You like, I fuck with Special Ed. He was in love with the Master P. No, I was. Back in 1996. Master P was a legend. You see how he said I was? Yeah, no, I said, no, that was my OG. See, I looked at rappers as like Chuck D was my uncle, you know what I mean? Easy E was my uncle. These dudes were my uncles and shit and cousins and shit. I didn't look at them like y'all did. But I'm gonna just say this How could you love basketball? Basketball ain't never loved you. You was a fucking bum. You went to a D League college. <laughs> you went to a D League college. college. <laughs> nobody, nobody in here know what your college is. You say you went to, no, shout out to everybody that's going to college, educating themselves in Cabrini. But you went to a college that nobody know. You was a All bum. Right, you, you didn't go to no D1. All right. you, you keep talking about my college. And you ain't go to no D1. They're gonna come back and get you. You ain't go to no D1. He ain't gonna come back and get you. He ain't going to no D1. <laughs> He's gonna come back and get you. You ain't going to no D1 school. <laughs> he mad because. He was a bum. Hold on, let me ask you a question. Am I a hood legend? Or what? Up Erie Avenue for basketball. That shit don't mean nothing. No, I'm asking you a question. Erie yes, Avenue. Yes, it do. Yes, it do. Because he can sit here right now and name a bunch of hood legends from his hood that's yeah. like, no, he probably but you, could've. Yeah. But Someone. he got caught up. I got, I got, I got uh, locked up when I was in college. Bro. Who's your game like? Who's my game? Who's Kenny you? Anderson. I was about to say, that's no, funny. I was about to like, say that. He, yeah, I was about to say that. Yeah. His shot, see, all that. That's see, tough. I know what my game well, why was you like. Messing that, why are you messing that man's name up? <laughs> <laughs> Chibs. Tell him who my game like. You know who my man is. Tell him who. Stanley Roberts. No, no, whoa, whoa, I don't Absolutely. even know him. I don't even know him. Absolutely. You already know him. Yeah, you already know him. Hey, he was Absolutely. nice in college, though. Stanley was a beast. He was nice in college. He was a beast. He was nice in college. Nice in college. In college. You, already, you already know who, you already know who. Who's your game like, in your opinion? You already know, come on. Sean Kemp, stop playing. You already know that. Who? You know that. The you know my shit man? like Sean Kemp. You know what Sean Kemp is nothing to like. That's my, come on, that's my, that's my player. That's my player. That's your prime. That's my, come and on. And Sean Kemp got like 14 kids and you got a fucking cap gun. You don't have nothing to This is my fucking guy. You don't have nothing to talk about. Like, you, like. You just hating on me, man. <laughs> like, how you gonna compare yourself to somebody? Y'all have nothing. I would've been Sean Kemp. Sean Kemp got like 15 kids. It ain't got nothing to do with his kids. I'm talking you about his game. My game is like that. Like, you, <laughs> like, you shooting blanks. Pop, smoke come out like... like everybody that I mention, he ate on. When I say... When I talk about sports, I'm talking about like D. Brown. You know, I'm dudes, he... He always talk about motherfuckers that's... They was all right, but... 
Like they be his favorite players. Like I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I just I just I be worried about your hoop game by your attire. No, that's to throw the young ones off. It's, 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 it's a color scheme, because you know they can't, a lot of them are sensitive to colors. So when I come, they thinking like, oh, here, don't, no, straight up. They like, oh, here, don't know. Oh, here, don't know what's going on. So they sensitive. So if I come on the field, and then, and then, and then. You said if I come on the field, see, that's no, what I, I, No, I ain't said the field, I said the court. Now listen, and then it's this too, then it's this. A lot of teams that you see me wearing on, one thing about me, my teams change every year. Oh, okay, okay. Like, Milwaukee's right. my fucking squad right now. Okay. I've been fucking with them since they out. Every, I'm just being straight up. I'm not staying with nobody that don't honest. win no fucking championships. Be honest. I the Lakers was my, like, that's how I'm rocking. I'm not sitting there waiting for no team to win. Who's why team why would I do that dumb who's, shit? Who's your team <laughs> that's this year? stupid. Who's your team this year? Uh, I got to wait to the finals. <laughs> I'm, I'm just being straight up. Milwaukee, I'm still holding in with Milwaukee right now on a strip for Ray Allen, because they, they say my game was like his, too, on back in the day tip. But, like, I got to, I got to, no, I'm staying certain shit. Nah. Let me let me tell y'all a question we 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 asked, right? We, we had we had we had a basketball player on the podcast, right? And we asked him, who career would you rather have? Robert Ori? Seven okay. rings. Pretty okay player, he, right? He wanna be mad Seven about rings, you know. Say. Or Charles Barkley. You feel what I'm saying? He was a great player, but he didn't win no rings. You know what this man said? Right. Barkley! What? He said. Why the f I don't drink champagne. Why would I want, Why would I want somebody right, pouring right, champagne right, right. on me? Robert Ori, I, I had to, like, you keep getting being in the locker rooms booze pouring, pouring champagne on you. Don't pour that shit on hey, me. Yo, what type hey, of shit? Yo, I'm know. not no stripper, man. Hey, I know. Why would I want that shit on me? <laughs> Mike, you know, I don't know what was going on in them locker rooms. You got a dude spraying you down with champagne. What type of wild shit He's is that? He's a loser. I'm not, I'm going to Barclays and Legend. Shout out to Barclays, my old head. I'm not going through that shit. Fuck them, I'm not going through that. You spraying the champagne on me, man. What the fuck is we going through? Hey, there's some players that probably made 15 to 10 All-Star games that would rather be Robert Hoy right now, that, that, that don't have no championship. Talk to him. They want to be Robert Hoy, bro. There's some players, there's a lot of players that would love I'm not to mad at you, I'd rather be Barkley too. Barkley's a fucking legend. I don't want to be post-career Barkley, the way he's shaped, but like in his prime. Barkley's a legend. And my game's like, more, more, people, more people love Robert Orr than Charles Barkley. Yeah, I'm, not, I'm not going front. I'm not post, going front. Post-career, what you talking about? Stuff vacuum bag? Uh, yeah, just dirt. Like, if you told me, I got a lot of respect for Orr, too. But if you told me you want to be Barkley or Robert Orr, I'd say Barkley. But yeah, not for his reasons. I don't know what his... No, no. Yeah, I don't like champagne either, but I don't, I don't, that I don't, wouldn't be a reason. You, thank you. He's with me. But... You wouldn't want to win a championship because you wouldn't want champagne pour. And if I do win a championship, no, I mean, I, I'm leaving the locker room. Championship, That's it. <laughs> it's experience of champagne. Yeah, championships are amazing. Like, don't get me wrong. Who sprays you now? Did somebody spray you now? No. I got sprayed down by Tim Duncan from Champagne. I that was my, the best champagne let, shower I've ever had. I let had. my kids okay. do it. And I'll take another champagne shower if I'm celebrating yeah, no, the chip. No, but I'm just saying, if you're looking at... <laughs> you feel me? Can't handle it. I'm shit. a winner. What's wrong? I'm, I'm a winner. I'm mad at that. No, I respect it. I got a confession to make. I respect it. I got one confession to make. Uh-oh. It was it. Y'all had a juicy juice. No, no, Barkley, 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 Barkley is special. That's one of my that's one of my favorite players. Barkley's one of my favorite players, and I was a Phoenix Suns fan. They didn't win. Dan Marley, Cedric Cabalas, you know, the whole team. That was my squad at that time. KJ. I'm putting it out there. KJ, they, KJ, that was my guy. Because they said my game was similar to his too. But I'm gonna say Johnson? this. Yeah, he was a legend. But listen, I'm gonna say this too. Johnson that's the only team I probably really liked that didn't win. I liked it them for a minute, they didn't win, they disappointed me. But I, most of my teams won chips. All my teams. You pick them in the finals. That's how it's yeah, supposed I'll to be. Pick, I'll pick them. Listen, I wait pick, till they win. No, 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 I don't wait till they win. I just have both of my jerseys prepared. He like, wait till they get the lead. The the both teams. Especially if it's going down. And, and if it's, I get emotional because I, I had this attachment with the victory. You remember the Lakers when I cried? I called you crying. I was happy. Hey, so moving on. Uh, De December. <laughs> Fuck it, I love it. December, you guys are going to start going on tour. Tell us about your tour and uh, the cities you guys plan on hitting. December? December, yeah, December 4th, we're in D.C. D.C. Then December, um, and then December 5th, we in New York City. Then December 7th, we in Baltimore, and it goes on. We're going to L.A., we're going to San Francisco, we're going to Chicago, we're going to Atlanta. Don't. We're hitting seven cities in like two weeks. Uh, we're not playing, man. You know? I, I, I need some VIP when y'all come down. Hey, we got you. We got you, man. We're going to be in there tripping. No Atlanta. We're going to be in there tripping. Absolutely. Yeah, we be in Atlanta? Okay, yeah, I'm in we Atlanta. Gonna, I'm we going to yeah, yeah, do yeah. it up, man. I'm pulling yeah. up. Matter of fact, y'all can pull up, sit down on the couch with us. We can have some fun, talk about life, whatever. So how did you guys come across that? Uh, no, we just, we, we, we already, one thing about us, we, we did our own show in Philly. Uh -huh. uh, sold out the Met in Philly. Well, we, we the did, Met, right? We did three, three shows shows in here. Philly. Our first year we did one, it, the crowd was maybe, I think it was 700 people. The second one we did, I think the crowd was 
thousand people. Yeah, and this one was And like, then the Met was was 3,500. Ooh, that's big. That's the one we came just out like Kanye, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was dope. Yeah, I, I had to bring Yeezy out, man. Yeah, you know? that was dope. Yeah. So, you know, we just, just trying to, you know, keep elevating. That's big, though. We might have some shit for y'all, too. Are you guys working with a group that does that, or are you guys putting all that together on your own? No, we, we, got, we got help putting it together. We might have some shit to talk about, too. Because we we going on tour, and when we doing, we, we hitting in 2022, but we're bringing ourselves a musical act and a comedian, so just kind of make it like an evening. Absolutely. Well, well, that's what we did at the Met. We sold the Met out on just just on us. First of all, mm -hmm. that's dope. But then yeah, we surprised Jake is them. Bam. Yeah. We surprised them, so, and it was magic. So imagine you think you just coming to watch us on the couch, and then, and then you get there, and we we bring out Jada Kiss, we bring out Fabulous, we bring out Beanie and Freeway, that's we bring out B. Simone. Be ready. And then we brought out Kanye. Yeah, we brought out Ye. Ooh. Yeah. That's tough. Kanye, Kanye was the headline. That's dope. You know what I mean? That's <laughs> dope. Kanye Gil Ye, that was Gil Ye. Kanye opened up for us. Yeah, that was Gil Ye. Yeah. And then what made it so good is Vori sent Kanye the video of and me. I saw that. And said, I didn't know you was in Philly. And Kanye said, that's iconic. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that's what's up. That was dope. Now, that's one thing I will say. I, I just watched his uh, his interview on Drink Champs, and you can say whatever you want, but I just think the more and more I watch him, like the David Letterman shit. He on shit, point to me. Man, he was saying some off the wall shit every once in a while, but more times than not, he's on point. He's on point. More times than not, he's on point. Mm -hmm. I fuck with Kanye heavy. Both y'all from Philly. I didn't know until we was doing our research. You guys are first cousins. I didn't even yeah. know that. That's dope. It's my, my little cousin. This my little big cousin. cousin shit. Okay, little yeah, big. Used to change his diaper. Oh, you get to but he's older. He's 55. No, I'm older than him. He's 50 right now. The fuck out of here. I'm 45. I'm 42, he's 42. He's 50. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So he's talk about him to the store and shit. Go get me a soda. Like, yeah. Keep the change. All yeah. that shit. <laughs> Who were some of you guys' influences coming up in Philly in the, in the early 80s? Well, mine's was, you know, Barkley, Dr. J. You know, his was rappers. Okay. Yeah. He 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 always won the rap. He knew that since he was, I didn't I didn't. You know, I didn't he had know. while he had nothing. Well, he didn't have no other skills, man. He had nothing on the rap side. He, no, he, he, he was a rapper. I used to write his rap. I'm saying he didn't have nothing. He was nice. He wasn't nice. He was a nice rapper. Right? He was low key. Uh, yeah. yeah. He was a he better thief. Than you, though. He was a better thief than he was rapper. Fuck no, he wasn't yeah. better, better yeah. than me. Yeah. You know, right? you know how um, you know how hard that is. Yeah, I know. I think, yeah, I think, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Listen, he's yeah. a bum. <laughs> he's a bum. I think, I think growing up in the ghettos of America, all of us have an outlet. Some of it is sports, whether it's football, whether it's basketball, few baseball, and some of our outlets be the music. These outlets is what um, the music be the soundtrack to the struggle. Mm -hmm. And it be a release when you're going through what you're going through, especially in the 80s. It was like, to me, my release was when I'm listening to Public Enemy or whoever I was listening to, that was a soundtrack to my struggle mm -hmm. that when we could listen to this music or, or you go to the hoop court because shit was real in the 80s. I don't think, you know, now, uh, like a lot of kids, I tell them, I say, y'all no don't even understand how good y'all got it. They got right? no clue. This shit is like a dream. Like, we couldn't even fathom or dream about living in this world. This is like a different world that y'all got growing up in the, uh, how we be, able, how now we able to be in a position to give them a better life than we had. You know, a lot of these dudes ain't grow up and see they, you know, they mom smoking coke or they or they friend got to come over to their house because their mom on drugs and she done lost their house and they got to share clothes and sharing a bed and turning up, you know, the TV with the the, the pliers and the antenna is the, is the coat hanger and just trying to refrigerate get break down. You got to put the stuff on the roof of your apartment. So the music was, that's why I love hip, hip hop and just R&B. It was a music that, had you thinking somewhere else. When your mom played that music mm -hmm. and she was cleaning the house and she was happy, you was happy, you didn't know what you was going to eat, you know, the welfare at check. At that moment, you was in another place. You was in another place yeah. when you heard your mom playing Luther Vandross. Oh, my love. Yeah. And she's sweeping and you mopping. You know what I mean? She going to put it together. She might got you hit next mopping, door. Nigga. You yeah, ain't I was, never clean. I up. was mopping. You didn't clean. You she used to tell me, I was mopping. I'll get my ass whipped. That was a different story. You know, that's when you had an ass whipped. Ain't no choice. They don't do them joints no, no more. Yo, yeah, that's you, child you, abuse. You know what I mean? Now. Ass now, you go to jail. It's yeah, child abuse. you can't even no, holler at nobody. I'm just saying it is what it is. But like, that... I that was one under that law, even. Just what? for the record, I put hands and feet on my motherfucking kids when they was growing up. Just right, for the you so little, they put hands and feet on you. He's a small person. Shut up. At the end of the day, at the end of the day, it was like. Everybody had their uh, release, oh, and that, you know, or, you know, had their escape. Right. 
sports or music. Take that plot. Mine music somewhere. was mine, just listening. So you grew up in and out of juvie. You know, obviously we talked about the bid. What was the turning point? Was the t- did the turning point hit you while you was in prison, or did it hit before? Like, when did it hit? Yeah, it hit me while I was in prison, because you got you to think. I first got locked up June 30th, 1990. That was 11th for, like, a couple days. North Philly? North Philly. I got locked up for robbery and, uh... Missed every family cook, my, my life... Yeah. Everyone. Yeah, my Everyone. life... It just went from there. June 30th, 1990, I got locked up. I got locked up another the week after, and then by September 1990, I was sent away for a year. And I went on to spend five years in the juvenile system. And uh, then when I was turned 17, I just turned 17 in October, I had got, I had got locked up for the cases and I wound up spending the 20. So since I've been on this planet, I spent more time incarcerated than I did free. That's crazy. Like this is the first time in the history since, in my life since I was 11, since the first time I got locked up, that I ever been out of prison longer than a year. Mm-hmm. I make the five year mark on February 17. Congrats, bro. That's big shit. It's February 18th, 2022. So it's like, this is this is the first time. So, you know, when I was in jail, uh, what happened to me was... He gonna shake you. I ain't shaking your head for not going to jail. No, listen, nah, listen. but I mean, to Congrats. be out that Stand long... Yeah, shut up. <laughs> Give me a hug. It's like, tough. But no, <laughs> the reality is... Some hugs, huh? I like hugs. The reality yeah, is... He started that in prison. Yeah, my celly, but that's another story. Listen, but... Uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? I needed a hug sometimes. Celly, hug me, please. Uh, that's a story. Me. Let's no, cuddle. Yeah. You come up to my bunk. I yeah. don't say cuddle. We, we, you come we up got, to my bunk. I, I'm not going to say cuddle. It might have always been. They both be on the top bunk. What you want? Spooning. Turn out the top. We be out of it. And we had our clothes on. That wouldn't count as nothing. That wouldn't be bad. But that's another story. But, but, <laughs> but, but, but I'm going to say this. I'm going to say this. I'm going to just say this, though. Uh, what, 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 what happened was, Matt, what really happened was, when I was in jail, I realized that I was, uh, I was in prison for living a lie. Meaning, I, in, the, in the ghettos of America, if you're not selling drugs, if you don't get no money, if you're not doing nothing, you're a square, you're a lame, mm-hmm. and, and you could be prey. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people that's out there, they're gonna operate outside of the law to be accepted as cool, and put and it fortifies you, and it makes people think that you dangerous the whole time. I had a conscience, because when we used to do shit, I used to be like, damn, why we do that? Mm-hmm. Why we do this? Why we do mm-hmm. that? And uh, So when I got to prison, I but woke up one day. wanted this breakdown. Yeah, yeah, that too. Why we do that? Yeah, mm-hmm. but it was like when I was in prison, I woke up one day and I was like, yo, I'm in jail for being somebody that I'm not. Mm. Like, I did all this shit to be accepted by idea, the idea of cool, the idea of, uh, you know. Fitting in. Fitting in because when I was young, only the pretty girls in my neighborhood, only people they talked to was the drug dealers that Straight pulled up in the Mercedes Benz with the jury on. Yeah, And uh, you never got accepted. And one thing that I loved about, I, I mean, one thing that I knew and I understood about America growing up is that America loved the successful criminal. They praise him and they put him on a pedestal. So when I watch, if, if you ask a judge, a lawyer, a cop, a district attorney, a United States prosecutor, what's your favorite movie? They're going to say Godfather, Scarface, where criminals is, I'm talking about like they're worshipped and they put on this pedestal if you don't get caught. You know why? Go ahead. Because they are that themselves. That too. But it's like, that's why they love yeah, it. That's corporate, what they are. Yeah, corporate yeah. criminals. That too. So I'm sitting back as a kid and I'm looking at everybody fantasize about these criminals. I'm like, I got to be a criminal. That's the most important person out here. Mm-hmm. It's not the, the police, man. He don't get no props. But the dude that's selling the dope and got the car or that's winning or that come and, you know, got the corner store and take care of the old ladies in the neighborhood, take care of the people, he got respect and he's feared at the same time. He's the most respected person in America. So I'm like... I got to grow up to be, but once I learned that that idea was just an idea, and, it's, and we and we fantasize about that, I'm like, all right, okay, I'm, no, this shit ain't gonna work. Cause it ain't no in between. It ain't no in between. Like, you see that, and you think it's an in between. Yeah, it ain't no in between. It's just dead in jail. Yeah, <laughs> see, you don't see any old happy drug dealers. Like my pops was in the yeah. street selling drugs, and motherfuckers is either gonna be dead or in prison. Like, or on you drugs, don't see they any, sell. Like retired, kick my feet up. Yeah. I'm a drug dealer. I did it my whole life. I did not. Nah. You don't see that. Never gonna happen. <clears throat> so what I try to do is. I, I said, I'm going to go to Instagram when I go home and I'm going to uh, tell these, these young cats, you know, learn from my story, but don't live my story. So I'm going to share my story with them on my journey and just put it out there. And but just he like, used to speak in prison, too, though. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah, that's Martin where it all Luther started. King in the prison yard. No, nah, I ain't going to say Martin, but that's where it started. But it was like, yeah, that's a strong handle to take up. But it was like, <laughs> I mean, that's strong to say Martin. But in the prison Martin. yard. Dude. Yeah, that's still strong. But it's like, to be able to, and as I said, when I come home, I said, hey, everybody on here is, is, um, it's cool, they got money. So I said, I gotta, I gotta be able to compete. Like I told Cuz, I said, 
I, I got to be able to compete with the timeline. Attention is worth, worth more than anything, worth more than money. Attention is the new currency. So I say what I got to do is when I'm coming down this timeline, the attention span is short. So I got to do something to grab your attention to make you stop. I ain't got no jewelry on. I ain't got no big car. Mm -hmm. I, ain't no, you know, I ain't no butt naked girl on Instagram. So when I'm coming down that timeline, I might be running across the highway. It's, I might be jumping off a roof. It's your I might be laying on the ground with ketchup on my head, telling you don't wait. But I'm gonna give you. The, I'm gonna stop you to give you this message. Mm -hmm. then, and that's all it was about because everybody wanted to be cool, and ain't nobody want to tell these these kids in the inner cities the like, truth. yo, that shit ain't cool. Mm -hmm. Ain't nothing cool about going to jail. Man, right. It's that's cool to right. have a job. It's cool to be smart. Like, mm -hmm. like it's really cool to be smart because yeah. at the end of the day, you know, we grew up in the ghetto. Everybody was laughing at the dude who sneaks was messed up, walking to school, holes in his pants, didn't have it all. But right now... But look at me now. Right now, it's revenge of the nerds. Look at me now, though. It's revenge of the nerds. I was that kid. Look at you me You see what I'm saying? The nerds run everything. Everybody that we thought, everything that people think, the nerds wasn't cool, but they run technology. They run <sighs> Facebook. They run Tesla. They, everything that we worship and we subscribe to, they run that. Right. So it's like, you got to tell these young kids in the inner city, like, yo, man, that cool and that lit shit, that shit is momentary. You better focus on being smart. That shit is temporary. Thinkers run this shit out yep. here. Straight up. And if you could think, you know what I mean, you're going to run the game out here. Mm -hmm. And that's what it's about. Facts. Let's talk about major figures. Talk about the group. How you got with the group? Major I started figures. the group. Uh, uh, Grandma House. He didn't, listen, you know what was crazy? He didn't even want to, like, he didn't even know how hot he was. I was like, the manager, the hype manager. I'm like, listen, cuz. Major Figures was your idea. You were my fucking manager. Stop you signed some paper you didn't, you, know. you didn't know. You didn't know. You still... Said you came up with Major Figures? I came up with the name yeah, in okay. Danny Basement. So All we right. were in Grandma's Basement. And we... Because he didn't, he didn't... He just didn't want to rap. And I'm like, yo... I played... I was in college. I played How basketball. How old were y'all at this time? I was... 19, 20? No. Early? I, I might have been 17, 18, like 15, like 15, something like that. And, I, and my whole thing was this. I'm going to him, I'm reading all the magazines, I'm deep into hip hop, I'm talking about more, more West Coast hip hop, rap pages, more. So I already knew when, when Master P was coming up out of Richmond, and I used to tell him, yo, we gotta shut this label up, we gotta do this. He's like, ew, like, I'm like, we won't. That nigga got in the car and was like, cuz, listen to this. Now, this is 1996. I had to warm up to this shit. I graduated. 95. 95. Oh, 95. This shit came on. I'm the first dude to play Master like, P. This nigga sound like he's shitting, man. Turn that Listen. shit off, man. Don't cuz I'm telling you, this that shit. First dude you play around Master around P in Philly. <sighs> I'm like, man, you like this rap shit too. But I didn't grow up rapping. I grew up playing basketball. I didn't even had cable. What was the record store up? on yeah. Born there? So for me, me, I was a kid. I never seen the rap videos growing up. I, I did. You feel what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I never had cable. Mm -hmm. So for me, it was you go to school. You from school, you got basketball practice. After that, you might go home, drop your shit off, you gonna play some more basketball. You and then you the street side of this shit. Oh, is you your homie Muslim? Hanging on, huh? Is your homie Muslim? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. You know, I was born for art, and that's yeah. it. That's okay. my government. Okay. You know what I mean? So I played know, it. For for us, you know, it was like uh, I wrote my I wrote my first rap. In college, playing around, fucking around with one of my some of my homies who had he some equipment, and we just used to smoke some weed, rap some shit crazy, fall the fuck out laughing, and then one day they was like, "Let's write something and come back and record it." And it just so happened when we came back, I was the first one to record, and all them niggas was like, "Yo, nigga, like, <laughs> what the fuck?" Mm -hmm. I'm, like, I'm literally, I'm like, "Nah, I ain't no fucking rapper, man. Y'all niggas tripping, man." Dog, that shit was hot. I'm like, yo, y'all tripping, man. Fuck is y'all talking about, man? Mm -hmm. I'm not no rapper. Then he heard the verse. Yo, cuz. This nigga was taking me everywhere talking about my cousin hot. He only got one <laughs> rap. Yeah. Listen, he only got one Listen, rap. He, he only got, one, got rap. one rap. That's all he needed. <laughs> but he hot. You know how crazy that shit sounds. But you kill. He always put that one rap. He, he spent that one rap. It was a, listen. It was so it was hot. One, it was the one rap. He didn't even know. But he thought he was just so good. So when I play Master P, I'm like, listen, because what was the record store on Broad and Air with Tyreek? Shout out to Tyreek Wallace, where he used to work at. Rashid Wallace. Rashid Wallace. Rashid, yeah, what's up, Ray? Tyreek Wallace. What was the record store? You know, I went Ray, in there. Continuous Mo. No, continuous Mo. You sure no, that was? No, no, no. That they, might have been the other that one. That was the other one, but it's yeah. on Broad yeah. They had these bins, and these bins, they had like tapes that was cheap. They was from all over, though. So I used to grab a lot of West, rapping Forte, so TRU. Mm -hmm. So when I grabbed that, I said, oh, shit. 
And I heard Master P, uh, this when they had to join Mobbing Through the Hood and all that. Shout out to Master P if you, if you hear this. Up. I got to yeah, sit you down. Up to your shit I'm the first boy to play you in, in Philly. He was. Okay, listen, we was, we was so with him I got to get with Master P. We was so listen, with him I played, I'm like, yo, this boy making his own money. He's independent. These boys coming out of the truck. So he like, nah. See, that's one thing I can give him, though. Like, as a young, like, Wallow, all of us might, we might have been 17, 18. Wallow might have been 15, but you wouldn't have thought Wallow was 15. Mm -hmm. You feel what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, he was always tall. Then nigga got a tattoo on his neck. Fuck bitches, take money. When that's when I was young. Niggas didn't even get tattoos. Like This was 95. That's what, that's what the tattoo really said? Yeah, yeah right here. It was, it's faded. You can see. <laughs> FBTM. That's when I was young and crazy. <laughs> I was crazy. You gotta understand, I was like... 15? So imagine, you know, we all young, we all young, but he the youngest, but he one of the tallest. Mm -hmm. Then he got a tattoo, so you'd be like, oh no, he ain't, you know, you wouldn't even think he was 14. You wouldn't even think he was 15. You feel what I'm saying? Some bitches take money. Bro, yeah, that was my what, mindset at the time. That's what we was on, bro. <laughs> that's what we was on? That's I just wanted some pussy on. and get some money. That's all, you know what I yeah, mean? So it was yeah. like, <laughs> but that music shit, I'm like, yo, because I seen something early. Like me, I always look to, I didn't look to, I looked to rappers younger, but as I grew up, I looked to CEOs and I started understanding what was going on when you had Master P, Lil J, Suge Knight, yeah. Tony Draper. I was worrying about them dudes. Yeah, Draper, because, yeah. because what I seen that was going on, I seen, you go to New York, you're going to sign to some label. But these dudes are creating their own opportunities yeah, early in the game. All this mother. independent shit. So it was like, it was like, yo, you know, and then, you know, then the babies and everybody else came and it was like so many other, and so my old thing was like, yo, cuz, this dude is that. We getting in the studio. I'm taking you to the studio. I, I got my man, uh, Peanut, 2020, taking him to the studio, getting samples, and I said, come on, we got rap. Let's rap, rap. Like, he signed the, the contract. The fourth song I ever did was number one on the radio in Philly on the countdown. You know how they do Power Night? Mm -hmm. the, number two, mm -hmm. Destiny's Child. I was a local artist, and my song was number one on the countdown for weeks on top of weeks. And you got to understand, I wasn't no rapper. Right. So literally, I went to the studio, and at this time, he done got locked up. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? But now, I'm starting to believe in this shit like, holy, oh, everywhere I go, every time I rap, motherfuckers is losing their mind, going crazy. Like, I only got, bro, I got signed, I probably had like 14 raps, man. It was a whole fucking bidding war going on between all the records. The third song I ever did that that we put to the radio was called Love for Gilly. I went to the stu I went to the studio. I said, what I'm a, what I'm gonna rap about? The nigga Marcus Graham said, rap about what you got love for and what you don't got love for. Mm -hmm. I'm a smart motherfucker, so to me that was easy. I was like, okay, I can do that. Turn some beats on. Listen to some beats. I like this beat right here. Went right, wrote my shit. I was always a fast writer. I always put that shit together fast. They don't even know what I'm about to come with. I go right in there. I got love for thug niggas and thug misses. Marijuana smoke, low poppers and dime sippers, drug dealers, credit card counterfeiters. My niggas locked up and all of my broke niggas. I got love for wild parties and wide bodies. Mm. Sweaters by money, killers like John Gotti. Bad women in short dresses with huge breasts. The buggy eye wagon with the triple head wrestlers. It's my time to shine, you know I'm going blind. And Gilly got love for other niggas' baby moms. Yeah. And what if hating on little Gilly was a crime? It be no men left here, they all get the death chair in the top three but i might be the best here low rugby timberlands and my guests where them niggas was i wrote i wrote half of that no the fuck he did he was in jail <laughs> <laughs> so I, 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 booth looking at that motherfucker like what the fuck? <laughs> so i wrote that half of that high. that shit hot right now Hell yeah. that was in 1996 yeah or 1997 you feel what i'm saying so mm, mm, mm. it was like all right, okay. Once that shit hit the radio and they was calling, requesting that shit nonstop, and I just keep hearing, number one, love. I'm like, what the fuck? That shit hard as fuck. And you know what happened? What's so crazy is like, the same way Major, Fid Major Figures got started, it's the same way me and I was with a game got started. Because I'm the dude that'll sit back. Me and Gil, see, one thing that's good about me, we listen to each other. Information, dude. I'm, I'm the one that said, I'm the one that's excited about getting the logos done and all that stuff. Shout out to Nick Rich for creating the Million Dollars River Game logo. I'm like, I'm gonna get the logo joined. I'm gonna call the lawyer, trademark this. 
Get the account, the set up the LLC. Go get the bank. I'm, I'm that. All guilt, I just need you to show up. He's going to do... Yeah, you sound, gonna, like, you sound listen, like me. Yeah. I'm the dude that's going to handle the equipment. Yeah. Oh, no, Gilly. I'm Gilly. Yeah, all right, bet. Yeah, I'm going to set up anything. Yeah. Listen, we got we to gotta call with the attorney. We got to yeah. go to the bank. Exactly. We got to do this. I'm that dude. What you say, so, Jack? We I don't got, even got to be in the room. I ain't got to be in the room when I'm yeah. in the room. Yeah, that's why. Because I called him and I said, yo, I'm driving from Baltimore. I mean, and I'm, when I'm driving, I'm like, all right. I said, listen, I'm going to send you this article. Read this. Spotify allocate 400 millions for Spock, some shit like that. I said, that was like in April. That was in April of just that year. They only probably put 400 million out for pot. I said, yo, we missing out on, they like. It's all right. He said, all right, come on, let's get it. I said, all right, bet. I called him back. I called him back. I called Gil back later on that day. This was like eight in the morning. I'm talking to him, driving from Baltimore. By one o'clock, I called him. I said, sign that DocuSign. I had the LLC. I had the trademark going in. I had the, all the stuff. The stuff was basically already done. I had everything, the logo, I locked down the YouTube, I locked down the Twitter, I locked down the Instagram, I'm talking about all in hours. I sat there, blah, 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 locked everything down. That, it's that simple. Sounds that's that's simple. simple. I locked everything down. You know, you know what I mean? Hit my man Nick us, We know our roles. Yeah, man. we know our roles. You feel what I'm saying? We know our roles. When it, when it, when it comes, see. That's why it's working like that, dog. Right. Because way, he you know. know, he know. Gil, Gil don't want to do this shit. He been doing this type I enjoy of shit doing for so shit. long. He don't even want to do I this shit. I love doing this shit. So I'm going to handle that shit. I love it. That, so you don't even got to be bothered. Mm -hmm. But Gil also been in a shitload of rooms handling a shitload of business. The experience is there. So, so the experience from either way is, you feel what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And one thing about him, he's a researcher. You could, you could mention somebody right now with, as you talking, he'll be Googling it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, because I listen to people, and, and if I don't know, I don't know. That's what's so good about him. He'd tell me shit I don't know. I'd tell him shit he don't know, and we just listen. Right. You know what I mean? Like, one thing about him, in the history of life, I'm talking about the human existence, he like in the top, he might be in the top 15 to 17 dickheads in the history of life. But when I tell him something, he'll listen. You see what I'm saying? Like, you know this dude's been a dickhead forever. You know this dude. You seen him on Instagram. Right. But he'd listen. He'd be like, damn, cuz, you right. I didn't but know I'm that. But I'm a lovable dickhead. You still a dickhead, though. So it don't I am. Like, I'm talking about extraordinary historical. But you got to understand. All right. That's what, make, that's what make me great. Everybody that's in our space that's loved is a dickhead. Charlemagne's a dickhead. Wendy Williams is a dickhead. <laughs> um, um, these two are dickheads. You know? <laughs> what, what are we talk about? Um, what, what, Howard Stern's the ultimate dickhead. Like, what are we talk? That's what it takes to be loved in this space. Okay. You know, you gotta not give a fuck. What you number? Be, what number you think I will be out of the top hundred? Well, people don't really look at you like that. But you know me. <laughs> I know the true you. So, this is true. I, I, so, I, I, so, I so what would the true me be on the dickhead scale? I don't know What would the true me be on the dickhead scale? Oh, you the ultimate. Oh, you don't know Wallow 267? I don't know that nigga. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, I don't know that nigga came home from jail. No, yeah, yeah, this is yeah. the thing. This is the thing. This is why you say this. Because I'm the dude, like, I'm not playing no games. Somebody do some dumb shit, be cutting them off, Gil. Right. Like, he doesn't, he, like, what's so bad is, right, I get all the flat. But I'm really... The nice one. No, the mm -hmm. fuck you not. Bro, soon as somebody do something wrong, you like, he gonna be problematic. Fire him! Right now, I'm like, no, no, no. Like, no. Does he, he end up being right, though? But. Trying to nip that shit in the bud off the rip. He three strike bull. He I, three strike I, I, bull. I gotta, I gotta and he be, always go to three, and I'll be like, I told you I had him I at one. I gotta be able to sleep yeah. good at night. So, I'm gonna give you multiple times to fuck up. And every time you fuck up, we gonna sit down, we gonna have this, bro, why would you do that? And I'm like, him, he won't even say nothing to me. He be saying, See, I'm the supervisor. I'm the one, but then we get out of here, get rid of him now. I'm <laughs> so, and, 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 and everybody mind, Wallow's cool. Wallow don't even say nothing. He just said, Gilly's the one that's getting it. Second time, yo, why would you do that? You know we don't. Why would you? The third time, listen, I got ice shit. Whole time he never said nothing in the meeting, but behind closed doors, he going I told you shit. I'm like, yeah, listen, nice. he he gonna say I'm the dickhead supervisor boy to come through. Oh, you, 
You've been in the break room three, four extra minutes. Who's docking clip, your pay? Clipboard. <laughs> next yeah, time, yeah, I'm docking your pay. Next yeah. time, <laughs> next time, my man. Hey, listen, my man, you right there talking to the girl right here. Listen, go ahead, just go home for the day. Don't worry about it. I'll see you next week. <laughs> I'll see you next week. <laughs> I'll see you next week, my oh, man. I told you next the last week. time. Oh, next time you ain't gonna be here. Yeah, oh, that's that. him. I mean, I ever see he be lying. I am. I'll be chilling. So you, you find out you got this unique ability to 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 make people move. You end up going with cash money. Uh, but it never really materializes. To be honest with you, when I heard about you first, because I'm straight West Coast, uh, so when I first heard about you, it was, your mind was like, wait, it was, uh, <laughs> it was, uh, you know, writing for Wayne allegedly, or it was alleged at the time, and whatever happened with all that in, in the Cash Money situation. I mean, I, I want the Cash Money. You know, I met them backstage. Shout out to them because they gave me an opportunity because I. I was supposed to perform on Powerhouse. I went through some issues with some other record labels. I got taken off Powerhouse. Cash Money found out about it. They didn't think that shit was cool. They let me perform. You know, I rocked that shit. Mm -hmm. You know, Stunner told me, you know, you, you get out your situation with Tony Draper, because at the time I was signed with, with Swaff House. You know, he said, I, I got the ass for you, you know, come on over to cash money. So, you know, shit I, is real. You act, you get killed. Playboy, this the deal. deal. I want the dough, the bricks, the keys, keys to the whips. whips. And nigga, act don't fly. Don't come on, you know I'm with you. You know I'm with you. He don't know nothing about that, that shit. Come on, man. He's a Nine bum little bum. millimeter boys, he man. We tripping. He don't know nothing about that, but, um, He's a bum. so, you know, bum rapper, bum basketball player. When I, when I, when I, you know, I called Drape and shout out to Drape, but man, cause that's my brother for life, man. To this day, you know, we talk a few times Tony a Drake. week. Tony Drape, the honorable Tony you know, Drape. The realest CEO, man, I ever met in my life, man. Yeah, shout, really out, shout out, shout yeah. out to Drake, man. Um, but uh, he was like, yeah, Gilly, you know, if you want to go over there, and he, he let me roll out, go over there. And, you know, it was, ex it was an experience, you know what I mean? I wasn't willing to sell my publishing, uh -huh. so I never had an album come uh -huh. out. You know, mm -hmm. but uh, that was God getting me to this point. Mm -hmm. Right. And you know, it's it's, it, it's crazy how how life worked because, you know, a lot of time, the same people that was was kind of you know holding you back back then, trying to make sure you don't, you know, maybe the same people that be doubling back asking mm -hmm. for the interviews. Mm -hmm. You know. That a mm -hmm. and, and and I don't even hold it against them. I'm like, come on, sit down on the couch. Right. Me and you know you got some cowboy shit going on. Mm-hmm. But I ain't mad at you because you can't blackball God, nigga. Facts. You feel what I'm saying? So it's amazing how y'all sold a quadrillion records, but I'm hotter than you niggas right now. Isn't that amazing? How does that work? God, don't make mistakes. How does that work? I lost the best of all planets. You feel me? Yeah. So I just look at it as though, no, God didn't give me that money right now. At that time, he didn't give me the, what, what I was supposed to get at that time because I wasn't ready. And you probably wouldn't have enjoyed it. You wouldn't have enjoyed it. I wasn't ready. I'd have been in prison or something. I'd have been running around here super cool, duper crazy. Money from who? Out of control. And so now, I feel like I get my just due now. It took a little later in life, but you just keep working and you keep putting that, staying consistent, and you're going to get what's meant for you. Standing on wall. Yeah, money, money from who? Shut up, man. No, I'm just trying. I'm, I'm trying to figure out what, what label you're talking about. So you was uh, you was on Breakfast Club uh, and had an opportunity for a group to work with Jay uh, Rockefeller. Didn't end up working out. Uh, you said there was might have been a little a small rift there. What happened with that situation? No, nah, I mean we just didn't sign. You know what I mean? They put together a deal. Oh, so for explain us. the. the uh, you know we were supposed to sign with. Initially we were supposed to sign with Rockefeller as a group. You know, one thing about me. Major uh, figures. Uh, yes, yeah, so I always had my business in line. So I had a solo deal with Suave House, Tony Draper. Mm -hmm. But in my contract, that had nothing to do with my group shit. Taking my group somewhere else. Mm. You feel what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It was initially supposed to be with over at, over at The Rock. But, you know, the paperwork issues, when paperwork come back, it's, you know, it don't say what it's supposed to say in our eyes. Mm -hmm. Maybe in their eyes, it said what it was supposed to say. In, in my eyes, it didn't say what it was supposed to say. Mm -hmm. So we, we just turned the situation down. Mm -hmm. And that actually opened the doors up for state property. Ah. Interesting. OK. Yeah. OK. OK. Makes sense. Ooh, 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 ooh. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. All right. Thoughts on Drake and Kanye squashing or allegedly I love squashing it. their They're stronger together. Man, for me, man, for me, you know, when two guys like that is is beefing, 
for me, it just don't make no sense. Because it's like, y'all two of the richest niggas on the planet. What the fuck is, what's the problem? Mm -hmm. what, 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 what's the issues? I'm confused. There's always a chick. It, it, I ain't want to say, yeah. Nah, she said, I'm gonna keep it funky. I'm gonna keep it funky. That's yeah. what, that's what, that's what it was on. At the end of the day, it's like, bro, we successful, we winning, life is in our favor. What the fuck are we mad at? Mm -hmm. What are we beefing for? What is, my house is probably 115,000 square fucking feet. What the fuck am I mad about? That's not like the prison. That's prison space. Yes, that's how big niggas' houses is. They fucking. I think you're talking about jail. I didn't you know. You start sweating when we walked in the, when we drove into the baby crib. Yeah, he had a wall. You got walls around your shit like a that's prison. That's shit like a prison wall. That shit like humongous. What the fuck are you talking about? Privacy. <laughs> yeah, he had prison walls on him. Yeah, you get start sweating. We going into a nigga house, he starts sweating. You got, you got walls like a prison. <laughs> 20 years <laughs> fucked him up, I'm telling you. It's crazy. What, who y'all like in the NBA right now? Uh, me, who, who, who's who got the best record? The Warriors. No, I'm talking to Gil. I'm not talking oh, to Gil. Oh, no, I'm just... For me, I'm actually at the end of Curry. the season when the finals going on. You know, for me, I'm a Sixer fan, but I think Steph Curry taking the MVP this shit. Mm. He is bacon. He bacon right now. He bacon shit. Do you think yeah. that... Not to cut you off, Jack. Do you think that uh, Ben Simmons can be... Uh, the bridge can be... For, or you got to go? Uh, I think Ben Simmons is an extreme disappointment, man. You know, when you say... When you say you would rather go to mental protocol than step on the fucking court and play basketball, which you've been doing your whole life. Let's just keep it real. You're scared to step on that fucking floor in front of them Philadelphia Sixer fans, nigga. That's what it's about. Bro, he's been... Because if we would have shipped your ass to Sacramento, guess what you would have been doing? Playing, nigga. Mm -hmm. You that scared to step on that Philadelphia 76ers hardwood floor that you would say, but bro, he, he been, send me he, the mental fucking protocol. He been handicapped from the jump, bro, because the coach he had is somebody that knew him as a teenager, as a kid. So when he got there, they just let him be him. They never, they never forced him to work on his game or a jump shot. So now it's at the point now where it's been talked about a couple of years, but now it's at the point where everybody see it, and then you see it's affecting the the, the ability of the team to be successful, right? Yeah. So now they're like, okay, either you gonna shoot or we gotta get rid of you. But they should have done that when he first got there, bro. You see but, what I'm saying? But, but for me, it's not even the fact of shooting a jump shot. It's the fact of always being on attack at 6'10", one of the most athletic, one of the most fastest people in the league. You got the ball, being on the attack and being aggressive. You feel what I'm saying? He don't have none of that. But you can't be a point guard in, on that team with the dominant big man and not be able to shoot. That's what, that affects your offense. You know what I'm saying? Because when they swing, swing, and you, if you not, if you out on the block, and they swing, swing to you in the corner, and you don't shoot it. What's but, the point of them doubling and B? But I, but I also know that when Joel and B and Ben Simmons play together, it ain't another two teammates in the league that has won as remotely as many games as them. They got the highest whip percentage out of any two players when they play together in the NBA. I'm a statistician. And a great Sixer fan too. Really? They won the most games out of in the next in the next duo is 30 something games behind them. Stephen Clay? We might have to fact check that. Yes, please. Because Steph Clay won a lot of games. Please. No, because I mean I mean I feel like they had a they had a real chance. I think when they had surrounded those two with a bunch of shooters, right. that's yeah. all you need. Mm -hmm. But slowly but surely they got rid of those shooters and that exposed Ben's inability Absolutely. to get a shoot the ball. And then, bro, you cannot, like, how can you not take a shot? You're our second best player on our team. You don't take a shot in four playoff games in the fourth quarter. You the whole for every game, you never took a shot in the fourth quarter, bro. To the point where we give you the ball under the basket, you got a dunk and you pass it to somebody. But you're not holding yourself accountable. You're not saying, you know what, I fucked up. Let me hit the gym. Let me get better. Mm -hmm. Let me get mentally stronger and physically stronger. We seen Michael Jordan lose to the Pistons year after year after year. They fucked Jordan up. And Jordan said, you know what, let's get the team together. We got to get stronger. 
We got to hit this fucking weight room. We got, and then they came back and won. I feel like this new generation, and these niggas got too much control, man. For real, man. Niggas, oh, I don't want to be here no more. I want to, man, niggas was just happy to be in a league and be making some money and playing basketball, man. We were. For real, man. No, I was. Man, niggas, be, niggas is like, it's, it's, it's almost like you, you lose the competition, you lose the fierceness, you lose all of that because everybody homies, everybody friends, everybody's cool, everybody's no rivalries, really. No, nigga, Bird ain't like Doc. Magic and the niggas didn't like Bird. Isaiah Thomas and the niggas didn't like Boston Celtics. We got real basketball. These niggas go on court, they be out there, they, they be teammates, they out there. I mean, they be on the opposite team. They got slaps. What the yeah. fuck are we yeah. doing? Yeah. He's on the other team. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> nah, it's going on a lot. It's going on a lot. You ain't lying, though. It's a different generation. Like Definitely. Isaiah Thomas said, man, me and Magic was best friends, man. They threw the ball in there. I won a full layup. He body slammed me. Yeah. We ain't friends no more. Yeah. That's how we was, though. We like, we could be best friends off the court, but on the court, it's war. So for me, it's just like, like, you got a guy who is nothing wrong with him physically. When you was 10 years old, you didn't have no mental problems playing basketball. To me, I thought basketball was our safe haven. Yeah. When I thought basketball was when we going through all the crazy shit that life brings to you, when you step on this court for this three hours, nothing else matters. Yeah. That's what I thought That's basketball it. was. Yep. I didn't even know basketball could give you some fucking mental problems. Right. I thought that was some life shit. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that, oh, I ain't been hitting my foul shot, so I'm mentally fucked up now. I didn't even know that could happen because this is a game, bro. This is something we played since we was kids that we fell in love with. That if you had a bad game, if you had, I'm pretty sure y'all been in the league, I'm pretty sure y'all had stretches where y'all had five, six bad games. Mm -hmm. Did you ever say, I need mental help? Now, so you can understand about why Golden State is my team right now. I've been there since Latrell Spree. Because they got the best record in the league, right? Yeah, no, 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 right. no. But uh, I would say this too. Shout out to Ben Simmons. I, I like your game, player. I like uh, his game oh, too. Oh, oh, fuck all that. <laughs> I'm a sports <laughs> analyst, right? <laughs> and I analyze body language. Listen, Ben, I know it ain't you. Doc Rivers, stop that dumb shit. I believe it's Doc. I don't think it's him. I don't care what nobody's saying. There's some sh other shit going on. I seen him look at him one time, and the look was not nice. It was nasty look. I just, that's what I believe. You know how long Ben been in the league? Listen, I don't care about how long he been in the league. I don't you know. You know, that's why you can't talk to him. He just gonna put that shit on <laughs> Doc. Doc. Yeah. It's your fault, Doc. Stop that been, shit, Doc. You know how long he has been able to shoot, bro? Leave that young boy alone. He messed his game up. Doc or Doc and no, that? No, Brett Brown, the coach that was there when yes. we got there. Doc over there on some other shit. Captain. Doc yes. bullying that boy. Yeah, Doc. That's why I got mental <laughs> issues. Doc didn't mess his mind up. Really, Doc, the best thing that happened to him, really. Listen, Doc was on that Pistons team you talking about. Doc is a tough no, dude. No, he wasn't. No, he was on oh, the Celtics, fault, man. man. No, he was not. You got Sam Cassell, oh, you got Doc Rebels over there. That, oh, my that's fault. what he needs. Doc, he's game. on the Celtics. You know what I'm saying? That's what he needs over there. Oh, coaching? No, I'm, no, talking about, play. I'm talking about coaching play. right now. Play. He got Sam Cassell over there with him. Yeah. Doc Rivers and Sam Cassell, they can really help this kid, bro. Yeah. That's two of the best people you can have on your I side. Know, Absolutely. Man. I just think Doc So for me, me, man, I just look at it as a cop out, man. Any anybody that's saying, send me to a shit, send me to the worst team in the league. I don't want to play with this championship team right here. That's just a fucked up mentality. Right, Sixers ain't no championship team. They ain't got no. Uh, that's just about? a messed up mentality to about? me. Championship team. And see, when we was playing, we only leaving if we ain't getting paid what we want. That's what we was leaving for. Bro, <laughs> bro, you mean to tell me, bro. Okay, I'm gone. You mean to tell me, bro, you getting paid $32 million to play basketball and you mentally fucked up? Because they taking some of his money, right, for not getting on the court. How much he should taking? be taking some of his well, money, Well, he's mentally, bro. that, and Doc So you gave us up. the hot take earlier about you think Steph's taking the MVP? I can't ask him this question because he's going to be at the KD. end. Who you feel like is going to win the championship this year? I feel like it's going to be hard to beat Golden State. Mm. I feel like when they get the, the kid Wiseman back, because he's a defensive, he's a he's a rim protector, and, and he, he can finish a little bit, and he got a little 15 to 17-footer that he mm. can, can knock down. 
I feel like them boys gonna be up. They already running this shit. Imagine when they get Clay and Clay, man, let's be for real, man. Clay like a lion sitting there looking at goddamn 17 wildebeest walk up on him. I'm saying he can't wait to get the back. The way they plan, if he come back 80, 85%, they're gonna be on one. And we already know he's gonna come back because he one of them kids, he put the work in. And he feel disrespected too. He didn't yeah, make the top, the top 75. 75. He yeah. feel disrespected. And I, I feel though he probably he's the second greatest shooter of all time in my opinion. I agree. Yeah, no question. You I feel agree. what I'm no saying? Question. So I feel like if you second to do anything in the league, Stop you should agent. probably yeah. be in the, the fucking top 75. And you got championships as well. And you a big reason why y'all won the championships. Could so, have been MVP in any one of the championships. Absolutely. So for me, it's like I don't, I, don't I don't see nobody beating Golden State. Mm -hmm. What about y'all? I like Golden State. Uh, Golden State Nets in the finals. Kyrie there. I'm going Nets. Thoughts on future boxing? Jerron Boo Tennis is Yeah, the cool. We know that's your boy. Philly. I, 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 I fuck with CVS. Yeah, cool, cool boy, boy Steph. Absolutely. Yeah, cool boy. You got him, absolutely. cool boy. Fighting for it's going good, down. Philly. Unification. Brandon Figueroa. So Have you ate at a spot, this craft spot? Yeah, we was there. We was there. That over. shit is good. I ain't was there. I killed it. I yeah, was on man. tape killing. Yeah. So I was on tape killing. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. They got a nice little spot. Yeah, I, I think, um, think, man, we just need the best fighting the best. You know what I mean? But I think the, the, these young kids, man, is on a different, different level, man. The, the Jerron Boots Ennis, the Devin Haney's, the Teofimo Lopez, the Shakur Stevenses, the Chris Coolboy. I mean, uh, the Coolboy Steph, the mm -hmm. Chris Colbers. Man, these kids is. 15 fights in, man, winning belts, man. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? Dangerous. Fighting veterans. They already dodging boots. Right. Oh, they, yeah, they, because boots hit too hard, man. Boots too, first of all, he's the biggest walk away. He's bigger than everybody. Mm -hmm. so Arrows made bigger than all of them. Then it, He's different. He's different, man. Boots always been different, man. Mm -hmm. But Boots' dad is different. Boots' dad right now is 66 years old, get in the ring and spar his fighters and put hands on them. Word. Yes. He different right now. So, you know, Boots reminds me of Floyd because he was born in a boxing gym. Yeah. His pop box, his brothers. two brothers was professionals. His two brothers was the shit. You feel what I'm saying? They just succumb to the hood shit. Once you get 19 and no, yeah. and you pop in, you, yeah. But his, his brothers was the shit. Mm -hmm. You feel what I'm saying? But he the one saying everything they did wrong. Yep. He was the yep. one that was right there at all the fights. He like this. Four years old, he in the gym. Five years old, he in the gym. Then he got a nephew right now who like, he like four years old. If you look at him, I just told Boots in the gym, he the only person that's going to be better than you. Mm. He four years old. He already in the gym throwing combinations. The hands, they got him sparring six years old. Or, like, so it's like, that's their family, bro. Mm -hmm. That kid don't smoke, don't drink, yeah. don't go out, don't yeah. do shit, but go to the gym and home. Mm -hmm. That's it. Question, thoughts on that? Because I know there's athletes in similar situations. It's just their life mission. We were fortunate enough to make it, but we enjoyed the process. Not saying these people are not going to enjoy it, but you just mentioned like the kind of regimen he's on. What do you think about that? I mean, some people are just straight, straight work and don't enjoy the pleasures of it. Some people can work and enjoy the pleasures. What are your thoughts? I feel like when you, when you, when you in sports, when you, in, you know, like yo, I feel like man, the most important thing, man, is is to to get your money, man. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, like boots right now, you know, or any boxer right now. You young. You hungry, you got the talent. God bless you with that talent. Now it's up to you to put the hard work in and finish the job off. This is, what are we talking about? This is a 13, 14 year thing. That's when it's over, you're probably gonna miss the shit for the rest of your life because everybody missed the, the roar of the crowd. Right. Everybody missed that. Yeah. Six, eight from the university of. Yeah. Y'all miss that shit. We all miss it a little bit. You feel what I'm saying? So. But what I always tell them is these next 10, 12 years is the most important years of your life. Mm. You, you do these right. You set. From the, for the rest of your life, if you want to have four chicks in Mexico throwing your dick in a Russian headlock, you could do that. Mm -hmm. If you want to run around here like Hugh Hefner with like? 55 <laughs> women. 
She ain't a married man, you trying to But I'm just saying, if you want to run around her like Floyd Mayweather, with 22 women walking into all your events, you could do that. Because you worked hard to do that. But you first got to achieve your goals to be able to live well how you So you got to do what you don't want to do now to do what you want to do later. Mm. Gang. Feel me? Yeah. Looking back from you guys' first episode that aired in April of 19, are you guys happy with what you've accomplished and the progress you've continued to make? I'm just I'm just happy with Barstool, man. You Shout know, out to Barstool. Shout out to Barstool, man. The best partners we could have ever possibly got with. Because one thing I liked about them is they know how to measure tomorrow. A lot of people look at you right now, and uh, when they look at you right now, and they basically, oh, is you, is you, is you at the top right now? And they can't see tomorrow. A lot of these companies, a lot of people, no vision. They they don't have the vision uh, and understand this technology and understand growth and say, okay, they right here now. Imagine where they're gonna be five years from now. Imagine a lot of people just say, oh, they're not hot this month. They they hot. They yeah. warm, but we we don't have the resources. To make the, you know to give them the am more ammunition to amplify them more, uh, and and they did. They understood. They got with us. We talked to them. We sat down. Uh, I think we had one man, uh, one John. We went to the office. Then then uh, Dave and Eric E Money came down to us, and we got it done. It wasn't it wasn't no, no bullshit. I don't. I'm, I'm not meeting to meet. We are not doing all these meetings. When you got the numbers and you doing it, what what we talking about? Right. Jerry Maguire, show me the money. Power of social media and how vital it is today, and like you said from the beginning, I mean, getting your shit off. Like you gotta get like like one thing about social media, it makes the world small because everybody's connected, but it's also as a tool that you can utilize to get your message. I don't care if you're selling rocks, I don't care if you're selling rice, I don't care if you you just talking. It's a place where it's though it can amplify anything you got if you're willing to put the work in and build. It's your own network. It's, it, it's yeah, it's Literally. basically your own thing, and it's about building now. It's about do you, or you're going to be disciplined enough to build whatever you're going is going to, and you got to service these people every day. You got to service your audience and understand that you work for your audience. The audience don't work for you. Right. And once you understand that, you you got to build your audience and overserve some time, because we're living in a world where, though, one minute on social could change your life forever. Mm-hmm. One day, and because that minute could turn into a day. And that day could turn into a mo- and it could take. But a lot of people don't have nothing to land on. You know how you have people that we hear about. They didn't. They wasn't putting the work. They just stumbled across that moment. So by you not putting the work, when it go, the people don't have nothing to double back and land on. Fifteen minutes of because you don't have no body of work there. So mm-hmm. you got two type of people. You got the people that go and they stay because they got something to go back to. They gonna go back to your YouTube. Oh, this guy. He been doing this. Then some people they go. They had a moment, get a little hot. People burn them out. And then it's over. Mm-hmm. So you got to be able to build something, and you got to super serve your audience. Mm-hmm. You got to take care of them because our attention span is like this. Mm-hmm. They can forget about you tomorrow. If you don't come tomorrow, they're going to forget about you. You got to come every day on social, and you got to bring that fire, whatever you got going on. And it's going to help. You know, social media, it builds you when you, when you work on it. It grows you. It's also an ego crush. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. It, crushes, it crushes millions of people's egos every day because people are out here measuring their life Man. to other motherfuckers on Instagram. No, off of illusions. This shit is magical, too. It's Man. a lot of magicians. Talk to it's them. A, it's not illusions. They Talk measuring themselves to something that ain't real. They're exactly, using, They're dog. using other... Listen, exactly, you will bro. sit there and watch Instagram and use a, a lot of these relationships, a lot of the success as productions. You will watch a production on Instagram and you will measure your life of what you're doing and not doing Yo, you're watching a movie. You're watching a production. Thanks. Like they, they produced that. It took time to get that hair on. It took time to, to, dry, to, to go and borrow that car. It took time to take the pictures in that hotel yeah. or, or that Airbnb. Rent it took house. time. Yeah. It took time. The, the photographer had to get the pictures and edit them and send them back. It People took time. do whole photo shoots just for Instagram. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> it took time to go into the, go into the clear port and act like you was getting off the jet. Like it took time for that. After you landed in Southwest. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It took, <laughs> yeah. It took time for that. Shout out Southwest. I fly Southwest a lot. I so at the end of the day, Southwest, plug him up, plug I'm, him up. I'm deal. Delta, Delta, show me love. Deal. Oh, we got deals right there. I'm going to negotiate them. I'm going to get back with y'all. Yes, yeah. sir. But what I I'm saying, yeah, that's what it's about, partnership. I got you a cut. Rand, mm-hmm. Rand, come on. I'm going to negotiate. I'm going to negotiate. You're not no people that know people that know people. But what I'm saying is that <laughs> you'll be looking at a produce, a highly Hollywood-like produce illusion, right. and you'll say, oh, I'm not living, I'm not doing enough, why me? 
Oh, God, please. You, you talk, God, don't stop taking that shit to God, too. Oh, yeah. Stop talking to God about these illusions down here. <laughs> you keep talking to God. Leave God the fuck alone. You, you talking to God. God, like, you, you back to this. I got to take care of the blind. I got to take care of the homeless. I got to take care of the little You back to this. Didn't I tell you about this last week? You back asking me about some worldly things that I already put. God put everything on the planet for you. All the tools you need. Right here. He put everything in it. Go connect with it. Yeah. But leave him alone, because he got to take care of the, the, the babies. He got to take care of the elderly. Shit didn't matter. He got to take care of the middle of the ill. But you keep hollering and be like, oh, you, you back again? Didn't I tell you? You keep hollering about the keep Lamborghini. Lamborghini. Yeah. You keep hollering about you want a Lamborghini. <laughs> <laughs> tell, people tell me, pray to God for all these worldly things. I want a, I want a Chanel bag. Come on, man. That bullshit. No, nah, people measure their, you know, their, their worth on likes and comments. Yeah. It, it, it's a sad society. Oh, and it's destroying relationships. Oh, yeah, mm -hmm. too. It's destroying relationships. Mm -hmm. And like... It's it destroying relationships because everything is a measurement. Mm -hmm. oh, 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 you know, uh, you know, Jack bought his, his girl a Lamborghini. Or Jack, oh, now you got women that, uh, how you were trying to press the dude to get a Lamborghini? Yeah. You are a registered nurse, shorty, and dude is a mailman. But you putting pressure on, you sending him that stuff at work. He like, well, how, I supposed, how you supposed to take that? Well, I right. let you send a picture of Kylie's sister buying uh, money back 28 acres and send that to her. Mm -hmm. Why, 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 you, why, why you gotta do that? Why uh -huh. I gotta buy all that? Yeah. Why you, you know what I'm right. saying? It's a, it's a different situation. <laughs> it's a different situation there. Absolutely. It's a and, and it's like, I'm just, I can't speak for everybody, but I, I can speak for the brothers. And it's like, we living in a world now where for so long, the system was, they had a marketing campaign against us saying we wasn't shit. Then the media had a marketing campaign saying that was a shit. Now the black women saying we ain't shit. Right. So it's like, what the fuck? Thanks, Summer Walker. Especially so, social media. It's like, <laughs> it's damn. It's some niggas out there, though. Yeah, yeah, you ain't. But it's some ain't shit but, bitches but, out there. Yeah, that too. That but, too. But, 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 that's, a, that's what make the yeah, world go round. Go round. Yeah. <laughs> shit. <laughs> but it's like, we're in a situation Fact. now where it's though. You're in a situation now where it's though. Fight against like, man, everything. It's taking a beating out here. What? Especially on social media. Thank you, Summer Walker. It ain't just her, it's a bunch no, of them. Everybody just, healing, just, everybody just, hurt. All this shout crazy out. shit. Yeah, yeah. Shout out Summer Walker. Yeah, I, think, I, think they, I think the nigga's mad at her right now. So. Quick hitters. Quick hitters. First <laughs> thing to come to mind, y'all can work together on these top five rappers in the game right now. Y'all done probably had them all on y'all show. Top five rappers in the game right now? Yeah, I had one of my favorites on y'all show recently. Who is? You asking us? Yeah. In uh, your opinion. Oh, in my opinion. In y'all opinion. The baby. The baby. Thug. Young Thug. Lil Dirk. Lil Dirk. Jadakus. He's hot. I, that's my guy. Money bag yo. He on one. He on one. Money bag yo. EST high right now. How, how you ain't gonna miss him? Yeah, yeah. You, you, you can give your list next. Um, fuck is it, man? Thank you, man. All right, go ahead. Go ahead. Are we no talking disrespect, about man. I be representing the, the, the young I niggas, man. I ride around listening to young niggas, man. EST? I, ESTG. That's, that's my dog. Yeah, he yeah, 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 he hard. is hard. Yeah, yeah, don't give that nigga a break, boy. 21 hey, Savage. All day. He's 21. He, 21 came, Savage. he came and stayed in my house for two days. That's the only thing we heard for two days. Yeah, I didn't yeah, know yeah, who he yeah. was. I could sing all his songs now. Yeah. Yeah. I rap all this shit. Now look back. Who's your list? My list can be... Of course, you want the Dreezy, Drake, Yay, and then. Oh, shout out, shout that's, out. That's shout out to my nephew, because I still be listening. Shout out to Pooh Shiesty, free Pooh Shiesty, man. Oh, I hope yes, you make it out. Shout out to your family, everybody yeah, back I in Cane Creek and Memphis. Shout out to y'all. Um, you got. It's crazy, because I'll be listening to all type of stuff. Like the baby, I've been listening to that new joint. Uh, who else I've been listening to? New. I'll be listening to and so he much. He said right stuff. now. Right now. Okay. Uh, I like Nardo Wick. I like your song. Uh, always uh, 21. 21, 21. 21, 21. I got like the same list, ESCG, but I, but I listen I listen to Ye and all. I listen to Drake. I listen to all that stuff, so I can't just get five. I'm never going to be able to get five because there's too many. Each of your dream interviews, past or present, the dream person to have on your show. Interview. Michael Jordan. Ooh, you. Denzel. Ooh, dope. Wow. Dope. Gilly, it's more for you. Build your own starting five of current NBA players <laughs> to go head up against each other. Oh, no, so both of you guys, your starting fives to play, you guys are the coaches. Oh, I got you. I'm going to kill you. Oh, I got Steph at the point, mm -hmm. right? I got All right, who's your point? We'll go back and forth so you don't... Oh, uh, what's guard? my man? Damon Lillard. Okay. Okay. Who's your two? My two would have to be... I'm going to go with the Golden State backcourt. I'm going to shoot. Clay. I'm picking. I, oh, let me get Smart what's his name. Boy. Let me get a. Uh, I need a uh, Durant. 
That's your two? That's your two guard? We don't even know what the position is. No, I'm not. I'm just picking my team. Nah, we, now okay. we're going back and forth. Who's two your guard. shooting guard? Who's your shooting guard? You can put him at two. No, see, back when I played, it wasn't no twos and ones. I'm yes, just, it was. Are you trying to this, ain't no, this ain't definitely no, what it was. Oh, now there ain't no numbers. But I'm just saying, you then. talking about this ain't no DJ and ones and twos. Okay. This ain't, so, I'm not so doing you, it. So you got, K, you got, I got, K, 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 I got my man Dwayne. And I got Damon Lillard. We got to establish this. Who's next? Who you got? My three, I'm putting. um. You got two shooters already. I don't know. I'm going defense. But what can make plays as well. Oh no, I'm going the three, I'm going, um, I'm going Luca. Yo, I gotta pick Ooh, my man. Ooh, I just thought you, I just knew you was going Braun. Yo, I gotta pick my other man. I'm going Luka, my man. team last year. Uh, 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 my man Giannis. Giannis is a Giannis, three. Okay. Player. All right. Dang. I got a team. I'm stacking on him. Dang. My four, I'm going, damn, that's hard. I'm killing him. I'm killing him already. How you gonna, how you gonna mess with, I'm killing you. KD Luka. and Giannis. That's and Dane? And Dane? That's just length. I got shooters, man. That's a whole bunch of buckets, nigga. That's length, man. That's 50 points. Mm -hmm. between, that's 60 points. You done. I killed him. He pulls in no sports. Hold on. My four. You can move him to the four. Ron. Ron. Who's your, your next pick? Yo, I, I, what's the boy? I need the curly hair boy from uh, Atlanta. That was shooting. That came Trey in. Young? Yeah, yeah, I'm putting him on the team, too. So you got Trey Young, Dame, KD, Kareem and Giannis. Man from Atlanta. That's a boy. And then I'm going, I'm going Joel. Joel, yeah. 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 You're in trouble by your last pick. Big move that full guy. I got to push you in trouble because Trey Small. Trey and Dame. First of all, Clay play defense. Clay is locking up. Clay locking up. Joel and B play defense. Bron, Bron, the block shots. Bron play defense, but he used to. He more lazy now. It's one of them dudes I, I like on the Knicks. Bron waiting for the playoffs to step his D up. This <laughs> I don't know how I'm gonna pick my last one. I think it's one of them tall boys. I don't know. Somebody on one of them. Uh, what's my that? team busted. Joker. How? Because see, we oh, move the ball. Joker. Joker. Yeah, get him. Yeah. Get him. <laughs> I got him. I got him. Get him. Listen, listen. I, know, I seen his game. The difference is my team move the ball. You got all dominant need need the ball in their hands to shoot. No, Steph can come off a pick. Clay Clay can get sixty points on four dribbles. Yeah, he don't need the ball. So that so that loosens up LeBron being able to have the ball a little bit more. He can facilitate Steph and Clay coming off. Man, you gotta be kidding me. You ain't got a shot, man. What albums do you can you listen to on repeat? No skips. One album that you can listen Sampa, to. Sampa, my greatest album in the world, Processed by Sampa. Who? Sampa. Sampa? That's a, my favorite artist in the world. He's from London. His name's Sampa. S-A-M-P-H-A. No, he just, he just is just so What, what genre? Uh, so? Electric. Electronic. Oh, okay. Okay. He's, um, he's everything. I got a meeting. One album that I can listen to? I got to meet Sampa. Just before well, I spot. Meet I, got I got to. I heard him. I got to, man. One album I can listen to front to back probably would be a uh, reasonable doubt. Ooh, I've been on that heavy. The pest crazy set. I've been that's, on that heavy like the last three twos. or four days. Dead heavy, presidents. heavy, heavy. I fuck with y'all. Can't knock the hustle. Simple doubt. What's some game or advice you would give your listeners, our listeners right now? Just do it, man. Whatever you, whatever you trying to do in life, do that shit, man. Stop watching life pass you by like a fucking Honda Accord on the E-Way, man. Stop overthinking shit. Do. My thing do. is, uh... Do and figure out as you doing it. My thing is, uh, number one, pick you. Pick you, and if you feel it, live it. Don't double back when you're feeling. Mm. If, you, if, you, if, you feel, if you feel that you want to wear this, if you feel that you want to do this, go with your gut. Go ahead and live it because you got, if, 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 if you want to be a graphic designer, go on YouTube and learn it. Uh, whatever you want, if you want to wear certain clothes, if you want to, you know, have your hair blind, whatever, whatever your thing is out there in life, don't let nobody put their insecurities and fears of the idea of the life that you have for yourself. Just go out, especially, especially the young kids. Um, I know it's hard because you got people out there that's, that's going to say something about you on social media or that's not going to approve. Stop looking for approval from people. You know, we're looking for approval to live. Mm -hmm. Like, we, you don't need permission to live. Get out there and live your life every way possible. I don't care what you are. I don't care what you think you, you want to do. Just live it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because you feel it, and that's who you are. You know? Last question, man. If you could have a duo on All The Smoke, who would it be? But before y'all answer the question, y'all have to help us get y'all answer on the show. Y'all set the bar pretty high with yourselves, though. So is there another duo out there you could think of? That would have? 
No, what you mean? On, on, that, that will be on this show? No, yeah. duo. I mean, we you got the two, you know. Yeah. You got two, I, it's, it's only one I can think of that, I, that we fuck with. Like, when you say a duo, I probably think, like, uh, two people that is Nori and, a, and a, a, a FN. EFN. Who are you saying? Who are you thinking? Come on, man. Knuckleheads. Oh. Dash Miles and Quill Richard. Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. That's yeah, how I yeah, got yeah, yeah. See, I was thinking yeah. what they thought, though, too. That was, that's funny. Because Nori, yeah, yeah, yeah. You said, dude, yeah. like, I, you know, they, I, I don't know them. That's why I just said it. You know, oh, no, I, I can make them. the call. We can yeah, get that done. We yeah. Gonna... yeah, and, they, and, and yeah. you know, I just like the fact that, man, we all in different lanes, man, and we all got love for each other, and we all embracing each other, and it, it's, it's, it's no... Competition, Not at all. man. It's we grown men. Out here. It's just, we grown men, right? We, I'm we actually yourself. you fifty, so that's like me setting an age. example of how it's supposed to be. Well, I didn't it, know I was older than you. That's crazy. No, you you old. He older than he fifty. No, man. I know. So he's forty five. Like, I'm forty three. I didn't know I was older no, than you. No, he's fifty. He's fifty. He just yeah, shut the hell up. <laughs> <laughs> he fifty. <laughs> he really fifty. Yeah. <laughs> he about to pull up. He's about to Google his shit. <laughs> <laughs> he really fifty. <laughs> he, he put that out there too. Lying there. He, got, he got motherfuckers really walking up on me on my birthday. He told me, man, happy fifty. I'm like, dog, stop <laughs> What? Why them said you was fifty on the gram this morning? Like, no, the funniest like, shit when y'all see man. when y'all see people that look like y'all. Y'all posted on y'all page. And that's the <laughs> <laughs> that be the Bro, I don't got to see it because all my followers send that shit to me. Right. Gil, I seen you out here at Buffalo Wild Wings. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but also real shit, we got to oh, do... Oh, oh! Who did this, man? Yeah, they nigga, I'm 37, nigga. Tell me he's 37 on, yeah. on Google. I'm 37, oh. nigga. You, you <laughs> did that. <laughs> said you did that. I, like you said, nigga, I knew people that knew people that knew people, nigga. Uh, I'm 37. Now, oh, look, 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 look. Gilly the Kid Net Worth and pop up. Why Slim from Cash Money pop up? Look. Oh, that's whose face came up? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what did they say my net worth was? Two million. They got me fucked up. <laughs> they ain't seen the, they, they ain't seen the <laughs> new contracts? <laughs> <laughs> they got me fucked up. That, when, when they posted that up. It always matters. 96. <laughs> and, and we want to thank y'all for coming thank through, man. We really appreciate, appreciate what you guys are doing. Man. Appreciate you, man. Definitely got to collab and do oh, something smoke, together. Man. We do, Absolutely, man. man. We yeah, coming to Atlanta. We can pull, yeah, yeah, we yeah. come to Wichita and pull up we on the live. We gonna get it in, man. Good luck with the tour. Good luck with everything. Yeah, go check out. Here. Listen, get your tickets, man. Right. Go to Million Dollars. Yeah, River plug game. it right now. Plug Million it. Million Dollars right. Worth of Game. Go to uh, December fourth. Game. December fourth is going down. That's when it starts. I uh, hit the December link in our bio. 5th. Go New to York. Uh, Gilly the King on Instagram, Wallow267 on Instagram, and Worth a Game. Go to our YouTube, subscribe, go to Apple, go to Spotify. D yep. Listen, tap into what's going on. Me and I was worth a game, man. We not playing no game, Barstool Sports, man. Leaders of the, leaders of the culture, man. You already know. Appreciate I'm you brothers. Man. We appreciate you. Well, that's a wrap, man. Y'all can catch this episode Showtime YouTube Basketball and the iHeart platform, Black Effects. Black Effects. Shout out to Charlemagne, too. Shout, Shout out to Charlemagne, for sure. Yeah. You already know. What's his week? name? Shout out to Leron. Leron, yeah. Le Le Lenard. Leonard. 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 Shout out to Leonard. Shout out to Leonard. <laughs>